is the GTX 1080 Ti still worth in 2023? If you're on a tight budget and are looking for the best option within 150 to 200 euros for a GPU, you may have come across the GTX 1080 Ti, the top of the line card from the 10 series NVIDIA GPUs. But is it still worth it after all these years? Today we're diving deeper into this topic, talking about these card specifications, synthetic loads, game benchmarks and performances in video editing. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, if you've seen my build video with the 1080 Ti, you know, this is not the PC. In fact, this is a 3070 Ti. Why am I using it? Because the PC with the 1080 Ti has been already sold. So, if you haven't checked out the video, make sure to watch it right here. The GTX 1080 Ti was first launched on March 10th of 2017. So, it's a pretty old car, scoring six years. But does it hold its age well? The 1080 Ti mounts the GP102 graphic unit, based on Pascal's architecture, with 11.8 million transistors, 3584 CUDA cores, 224 TMUs, texture mapping units, and 88 render output units. ROPs. The base clock of the GP102 is 1481 megahertz and the boost clock is 1582 megahertz. This GPU mounts a whopping 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory at 352 bits with a max bandwidth of 484.4 gigabytes a second at 11,000 megahertz. As for power input, we get six pins and 8 pins connectors, drawing a total of 250 watts. Okay, sounds cool and fancy, but how does it handle gaming? Let's start with something light, like Rocket League. For me, Rocket League is the basic of gaming. If it doesn't run well on a PC, it probably means you're using a Chromebook, because it's an extremely light game. How does the 1080 Ti handle it? greatly. At 2K, everything maxed out, it manages to hit more than 200 FPS with ease. If we consider that the most popular resolution for games, according to Steam data, is still 1920 by 1080, so 1080p, in fact 64.33% of all users use 1080p, this will handle it more than fine. Let's go with something a little bit more requiring. Rainbow Six Siege. Still a relatively light game, but you need a decent PC to run it. Using the included benchmark, at 1080p we score an average of 185 FPS, and in 2K we get 168 FPS, both at almost maxed video settings. You need to consider that the Rainbow Six benchmark is much more demanding than the actual game, so during the gameplay the frames are even higher, more than 200 FPS. I've also tested Valorant, but it's a more CPU bounded game, so results may vary a lot with other systems since I was using a Ryzen 7 1700X. In 1080p we get anywhere between 200 to 300 FPS, and at 2K the same results. Once again, this is because of the CPU. As you use a higher resolution, it uses more GPU power, so it balances out. The last game I tested is Shadow the Tomb Raider. Definitely a more required game, and the results are honestly impressive. In 1080p, everything maxed out, we get an average of 93-94 FPS, I've run it two times and these were the results, and in 2K 78 FPS. We're talking of a 6 year old GPU, still able to play every game with no problem whatsoever in 1080p and 2K. Now switching to synthetic benchmarks, we firstly have Evan Benchmark, which scores 1432 in 4K, it's not recommended, but <laughs> I was using my 4K monitor, so I ran it at 4K, high quality. Fullmark scores 9762 points in 1080p, and 3D Mark gets 8697 for the GPU. All the tests were recording while using an undervolt on the 1080 Ti, so results may vary a little bit with the stock settings, but the results show one truth. This is still a performance card to play games in 1080p and even 2K, but obviously there are some catches. The first one is pretty obvious, 
If you buy a 6 years old GPU, its lifespan will be limited. It may last another 6 years as well as one year, depending on how the previous owner treated it. If he or she never repasted it, never changed thermal pads and always used it in a poorly ventilated case, it's going to die sooner than the same card treated properly. Most of the time you can't know how it's been used, so it's pretty much luck. Second of all, you're going to lack ray tracing who cares, and DLSS. You can easily live without the first one, but without DLSS you won't be able to play 4K at all, and the GPU will probably struggle to play at 2K in future titles. Lastly, power efficiency. At 250 watts of TDP, it's not the most power efficient GPU by today's standards. For context, a 4070 has a TDP of 200 watts, and it surely is more powerful and performant than the 1080 Ti. But it also costs a lot more. So, all things considered, I believe that the 1080 Ti is the best option for sub 500 euros builds whatsoever. Even if it's not the most recent, it can easily perform every kind of tasks and can handle 2K without problems, as of today. Something impressive for the price you can find this card at. Which card would you like me to review next? Maybe an older one, maybe a newer one, I've got a 4090 which I'm surely going to talk about. But let me know your thoughts about the 1080 Ti down in the comments and make sure to leave a like, comment and activate the notification bell and subscribe so that you won't miss any future video and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!